So now looking at some other bones, here we've got an avicular bone. And uh, now we're looking at a superior point of view. So we're looking down on the navicular from above. And if we just turn it so that now we're looking at the medial surface, so it's a right navicular bone, what's this great big lump here? That's the navicular tuberosity. It's the only feature you need to know on the navicular. So with the navicular, I can either just pin it somewhere else and you just say navicular, or I can pin it on the tuberosity and then you say navicular tuberosity. Oh, and I forgot to mention, of course, navicular, as you know, means boat or boat shaped. And of course, when you first saw it, you thought I was holding a little toy boat, didn't you? Because it looks just like a boat. All right, so there we've got the navicular. Now, just to kind of put it into context, though, here we have a right talus, seen from a superior point of view. The navicular sits on the front of the talus, on with articulating with the head of the talus, just like that, okay? And then if we turn to look at the medial surfaces, there's the navicular tuberosity that you can't miss just there. And it's quite a palpable structure. You can feel it on living individuals. Uh, and then we can also, if we want to, of course, add in the calcaneus. And so we can sit the talus on the superior aspect of the calcaneus like so. And we can see how those bones fit together. Now, anterior though to the uh, navicular, we have the three cuneiform bones. And here's three that I put together earlier. Uh, and what we've got, the cuneiform means wedge shaped. Can you see how each of these bones is broad on one side and then narrow on the other? So what we've got with these two bones here, they're, they're broad up here. This is the superior or dorsal surface. And this is the intermediate and lateral cuneiform, or second and third. So they're broad on top and then narrow on the plantar surface. Whereas the first or medial cuneiform is broad on the plantar surface and narrow on the dorsal surface. So these three will articulate with the navicular like so. So we've got three cuneiforms seen from a, a superior point of view and you can see we've got the talus and the navicular on there as well. And that's how they will fit together. And then of course, let's not get too ambitious, um, but what we can try and do is just at least show how the, at least one of the metatarsals will uh, articulate in there too. So we've got, it's a really great, like a 3D jigsaw puzzle, putting these bones together with a bit of movement. It's really good fun, until you get too ambitious. And all falls apart. But that's just showing how that um, second metatarsal will fit in there nicely. All right, now with the cuneiforms, you don't need to identify any features on them, just which one it is. Please note, the middle one is the smallest. So when you're looking from just about any point of view, the middle, or sorry, intermediate or second cuneiform is the smallest of the two. The medial is by far the largest. So when you're looking at them, that really helps to identify them. Then we have the cuboid. Now remember, of course, the cuboid is the lateral uh, bone. It's going to be lateral to the cuneiforms. And so here we have superior view there on the calcaneus. And I'll just try and remember yep, how to fit the, the cuboid on the front there. So the cuboid articulates like that with the calcaneus. What you can see with the cuboid is on this posterior surface here, it just has one quite clear articular facet there. On its anterior surface, can you see that there's uh, a ridge just here? And so this flat bit here will be for the fifth metatarsal and this flat part here will be for the fourth and those two parts are pointing in slightly different directions which you can kind of see there uh, but you don't have to be able to necessarily identify those two bits but what you do need to be able to identify is if we turn this is the dorsal or superior surface of the cuboid we turn it over on the lateral and then moving towards the plantar surface we have here a facet and the facet is sitting on the cuboid tuberosity. Now what's that facet for? Why is there a facet out there? What does that articulate with? Remember there's a sesamoid bone in the tendon of fibularis longus. 
And that's what articulates there. So it is actually a little synovial joint with articular cartilage, usually. And then the tendon carries on this way and goes through this groove here. So this is the cuboid tuberosity and this is the, the groove for the fibularis longus tendon. So they're on the plantar surface. So if we show you when it's articulating with the cuboid, we've had to turn that over to look at the plantar surface to be able to see those features. So that's the cuboid. And then let's just look at a couple of um, metatarsals. Here we've got the first metatarsal and you can spot it immediately. Here's the second. So the first is a lot shorter and more solid, thicker than any of the other metatarsals. So you should be able to tell it pretty easily. But there's a couple of features you do need to know. But first, on any metatarsal or phalanx, you should be able to identify base, shaft, head. Okay, so that's any of these um, smaller long bones. But then on the first metatarsal, if we turn it over and look at the plantar surface, so this is the inferior surface, here we've got two grooves on the, on the head. Those are grooves for the sesamoid bones that are associated with the first metatarsophalangeal joint. And then in between them, we have the median crista. So that's the median crista, that groove in between them. So, sorry, that ridge in between those two grooves. So that's the first metatarsal. The other one that you hopefully can identify is the fifth. And the reason why you can identify that one is because of this. So that's sometimes called a styloid process, sometimes called the tuberosity at the base of the fifth metatarsal. The others don't have anything that sticks out laterally quite like that. So the fifth metatarsal should be easy enough to identify. Now there's one other structure on the, the bones uh, that's not just on one particular bone but is a feature that's surrounded by a few bones. We're looking now at a lateral view of a right foot. And here, here we've got the talus. So we've got the lateral malleolus here. You can just see part of the tibia here. We've got the calcaneus here and cuboid. So navicular and the neck of the talus is right here. This big opening here is the sinus tarsi. So that's on the lateral aspect of the foot. It's just anterior to the lateral malleolus. And on a living individual, it is a space that you can actually get your finger into. It is, there's not much there. There are some ligaments and muscles around the edge of the sinus, but it is a palpable space that you can feel. But please notice that it is the lateral opening of the tarsal canal. And I'm not sure how well you can see it, but you can just see the table through the tunnel there. And that's the tunnel that's made up by the um, sulcus calcanei inferiorly and the sulcus tali superiorly makes up the tarsal canal which the interosseous talocalcaneal ligament sits in.